All right, we have uh, important information for parents. If your child likes sports drinks, a new study shows those drinks may not be the best option, may not be good for them. The American uh, Academy of Pediatrics says the average kid doesn't need all the extra sugar and calories. So do you let your kids drink sports drinks? We want to know. You can vote right now on our website, live interactive poll, wxyz.com slash vote is where you need to go. We're going to share the results for you at the end of our newscast. In the meantime, 7 Action News reporter Nia Harden is live with more on the results of that study. Well, Kenan, according to this study, they say that the average child's physical activity doesn't require for them to have a sports drink that requires that rehydration. And this all comes from that study from the American Academy of Pediatrics. They just released a study analyzed national data from 2010 National Youth Physical Activity and Nutrition Survey and the 2015 Youth Risk and Behavior Survey. Now, in 2015, they say more than 57% of the more than 22,000 high school students survey reported having at least one sports drink in the prior week, up from 56% in 2010. The, st the study says that the average child does not exercise enough. Therefore, they don't need the large amounts of sugar and calories that sports drinks have. They also found that teens who watch TV more than two hours a day consume sports drinks even more. Now we know sodas are banned in schools, but sports drinks could be next. And you know, with kids and teens being more obese these days, it may just be a good reminder for us to all pick up that bottle of water instead of that sports drink. Naya Harden, 7 Action News. Thank you very much, Naya. Nearly 10,000 people gathered in downtown Detroit for the 63rd annual NAACP Fight for Freedom dinner. It was held last night inside Cobo Center. The yearly fundraiser brings together grassroots organizations with leaders in faith, politics and business from every ethnic group and every age range. Now, this year's theme was we can't rest now. The stakes are too high. Now, among the topics discussed included the government, voting, dignity, inclusion and civil rights. This year's keynote speaker was New Jersey Democratic Senator Cory Booker. In the end, power can seize nothing without a demand. And we are at a time in American history that we cannot let ourselves be confused about where the power lies. The Fight for Freedom Fund dinner is the largest sit down dinner in North America, and it was announced last night that the 110th National NAACP convention will be held in Detroit next July. 6.33 is the time now. Three men are in custody and facing charges after being accused of trashing a gas station and then shooting at a store clerk. This happened early Sunday morning at the Shell station at 12 Mile and Hoover in Warren. The clerk told us that the drama began after he got into an argument with the suspects over T-shirts. He says the men got mad and started throwing store racks everywhere. Seconds later, one of them pulled out a gun and fired a shot at him. All three men then left the store. The clerk managed to get their license plate number as they were driving off. Fortunately, he was not hit with a bullet. Well, this morning, people at one apartment complex are safe after a fire destroyed their building. This happened yesterday morning at the Lakeside Park Apartments near Hayes and 21 Mile Road in Shelby Township. That fire started on the second floor and it spread to the rest of the building and it caused the roof to collapse. Crews were able to put out the flames, but 16 units were damaged. Fortunately, nobody got hurt. Well, in Hawaii, the Kilauea volcano continues to erupt on Hawaii's big island this morning. Sadly, at least 26 homes have been destroyed so far. And more than 1,700 people remain evacuated. The volcano is spewing molten lava through at least 10 fissures, leveling homes and roads and taking down trees. Health officials are also warning families that sulfur dioxide levels in the air could increase the risk of respiratory infections. The Red Cross is now open to shelters where people can gather while they wait to hear the fate of their homes and their lives. There is no sign that the when the eruption will stop. President Trump's pick to be the next CIA director has not decided to withdraw her nomination. Gina Haspel's confirmation hearing is now set for Wednesday. Haspel was part of the CIA's interrogation program. That program was known for carrying out interrogation practices like waterboarding. These techniques were carried out on prisoners with suspected links to terrorist groups. As a result, the White House staff were worried that her role in the interrogation program could ruin her chances of being confirmed and damage the CIA's reputation. 
First Lady Melania Trump will be announcing her formal platform today during an event in the White House Rose Garden. Before the election, Mrs. Trump said that she would lead a campaign against online bullying. The First Lady also said that she planned to focus her efforts on the well-being of children. Melania Trump's spokeswoman says that the First Lady will take a multi-pronged approach to issues affecting young people. And right now, we're giving away another $1,000 to one lucky viewer. It's all to help you get ready for summer. And today's big winner is Ron Godandiak from Whitmore Lake. I hope I said your name right. If I didn't, I do apologize. And when you call us, you can tell us how to pronounce it. You just won $1,000, Ron. But you do need to call us by 7 a.m. to claim that prize. The number's right there on your screen, 248 Three five six zero zero seven seven. Again, that number is two four eight three five six zero zero seven seven. Ron from Whitmore Lake. Please give us a call to claim your thousand dollars. Now, if you're not Ron, don't worry. There are still more chances to win. You can register right now by going to wxyz.com slash contest and then watch for your name each weekday morning between six and seven a.m. All right, Ron from Whitmore Lake. Give us a call. 636 still ahead, a cracked windshield forced a jet blue plane to make an emergency landing. What the airline's saying about the danger that the passengers were in. Plus, your friends and family know all about you, right? But what does your car know about you? Stick with me for a second. We all have seen these before, right? Cameras on your vehicle. What if I told you people can see that information? We take a closer look. Coming up. But first, let's take a live look over Mount Clemens this morning. Seven first alert meteorologist Kevin Jean says today will be sunny with highs in the upper 60s. Kevin will let us know when our next chance for rain moves in and his updated forecast in seven minutes or less. Plus, I'll have a look at your Monday morning commute while we are uh, without any accidents on our major freeways right now. And things are looking pretty good out there at 94 in Big Tire. There is a lot of construction, a lot, a lot. You're going to want to pad in extra time in your commute. Coming up, I'll help you get around to all of those orange cones. This morning, we're asking, what does your car know about you and who has access to that data? And our Matthew Smith is live in Southfield with more on new technology and what we need to be aware of. Matt? Well, you know, it's pretty easy to see that vehicles are getting more and more high tech. Well, case in point, how about those rear view backup cameras on so many of our newer vehicles and new cars? They have even more cameras. This is the inside of a Tesla Model 3, and this is a camera pointed right at the driver. The manual says the camera is not turned on right now, but could be used for potential future features. Tesla promises that it will let customers know before they turn the camera on. GM's 2018 Cadillac CT6 with Super Cruise has a similar internal camera. It monitors for driver distraction, but GM says they don't collect or store data. But more cars are having more and more sensors. Consumer Reports noted that out of 44 brands, 32 of them now offer up wireless data connections as well. But the question remains, why? A lot of data is being collected to help automakers prepare for self-driving cars. It's a machine learning process. They're using your data to map the roads and better understand how vehicles and people are going to react on those roads. And the law gets murky. The 2015 law says crash data belongs to the owner, but that's a small amount. And some of us voluntarily give it up, even if we don't know it. Consumers shouldn't be put in a position where they have to search for what information is being gathered about them, how it's being gathered, and what it's being used for. So the cameras are looking at you, but who's looking at the data that they actually collect? You know, Consumer Reports has an advocacy arm called Consumer Union. Uh, they're asking for more clarity about what is being collected, at the very least, more transparency about it. Uh, we're live in Southfield this morning. Matthew Smith, 7 Action News. At least they're more transparent. We're yeah. trying to be. Thank, well, thank you, you very, very much, much. Matt. 641 is the time now. We're just weeks away from this year's Belle Isle Grand Prix. And these are live pictures from Belle Isle where crews are making progress for the big event. The Grand Prix will be held on June 1st through the 3rd. You can watch it all right here on Channel 7 ABC. And coming up at 7 a.m. on TV 20, Detroit, our sister station, we're going to be speaking live with Bud Danker, the event's chairman, about what's new this year at the races. 
And it's always such a fun so weekend. Fun. Yeah, here in the Motor City. A great weekend. And of course, it is one of the weekends during the summer where weather is super, super important. Yeah. We'd like a day. Uh, we'd like a weekend, in fact, uh, kind of like we had Saturday. I think the weather is important every day. Thank that you. is true. Yeah. That is true. I, I agree. Right. No, I, but I mean, I saw him setting up for because uh, we yeah. rode yeah. bikes around bike Belle Isle, and yeah. uh, I mean, it looks fantastic. And obviously, I can't imagine. You're sitting out there if it's pouring rain. I mean, uh, we've really done it before. For well, the, the drivers the on the road, it can be yeah. dangerous for them too. You've yeah, got a whole whole yeah. lot riding on uh, on that weekend. Well, this past weekend has been great and uh, high pressure really uh, overhead for us today. That's going to leave us nice and dry and uh, sunny throughout the day today. So uh, really, not many clouds overhead and not even a whole lot of uh, rain that we're uh, looking at. So right now temperatures are in the uh, mid 40s, about 47 degrees in Detroit and will warm up for uh, we will warm up quickly this morning. Mostly sunny skies temperatures in the 40s and this afternoon I think highs in the mid to upper 60s. Again, mostly sunny for the rest of today. Highs around 68 degrees. The average high today is 67. So uh, right around average for this time of year, even though it, it will be the coolest day that it's been in about the last eight days. But uh, still a comfortable day with plenty of sunshine and highs in the upper 60s. Tonight, then back down into the 40s, 46 degrees. I'm going to show you our future cast temperatures and basically a lot of warm air building up across the middle of the country and expanding northward all the way through Minnesota, North Dakota, and uh, even Winnipeg around 82 degrees. Mid 80s around Minneapolis and Fargo this afternoon while we'll be in the 60s. That warm air shifts a little farther east by tomorrow, so we are back into the 70s tomorrow afternoon. And uh, we'll look at temperatures still even Wednesday in the uh, in the mid 70s before uh, we we'll start to cool down just slightly by the end of the week. So we're looking at uh, mid 70s tomorrow and Wednesday and then we'll have uh, high temperatures uh, back down to the 60s for a few days to end of this week. Chance of showers beginning Thursday off and on through the day Thursday. A few showers possible Friday, Saturday and Sunday, but high temperatures still off the close to 70 through the rest of the week. Jennifer Ann. All right, thank you so much. Uh, we are taking a look at several things here this morning. We do have an accident that just popped up on M59 westbound at DeQuinder. So we just try to get that up for you so you can take a look. So M59, not only is it, of course, a very popular and busy road, but it's also one of the detours for 696 and 696 westbound is